Hi, this is Brian. Welcome back to the Optimal Living 101 Masterclass series. Today, I'm thrilled to be chatting about Abundance 101, how to create true wealth in your life by investing wisely in you, Inc., and the best way to become a billionaire. As always, we've got 10 big ideas we're going to look at. Let's take a quick look, and then we'll jump in. Our first big idea is the ultimate currency. What's the ultimate currency we're all after? It is, hint, happiness. Every single thing we do is directed toward meeting that end. Therefore, we want to choose our goals wisely as we pursue creating true wealth in our lives. We'll talk about that, and we'll talk about the affluenza virus is what the opposite of happiness that uh, the psychologists discuss when you get a little bit too distracted in the extrinsic pursuit. Of course, money is a wonderful tool, but we want to be wise as to how we pursue it and how we use it. Our second big idea is psychological wealth. Ed Diener is one of the world's leading positive psychologists, and he tells us that there's a quick way to become a psychological billionaire. We're going to walk through the balance sheet of a psychological billionaire. What does that look like? Well, it has four elements that we will unpack. Positive affect minus negative affect plus life satisfaction plus flourishing. We're going to go into detail on each of those, of course. Our third big idea is spiritual economics. We're going to step back and look at uh, economics and abundance and wealth creation from a higher plane via Eric Butterworth, who was a wonderful minister, and uh, he redefined some terms for us. Prosperity, affluence, and security. We're going to look at those words and see what they really mean in their deepest etymological uh, essence and in their highest philosophical and spiritual truths. That's going to be a fun one. Now, all three of those conceptual ideas are going to lead us to our fourth big idea, which is the essence of this entire class, which is invest in you, Inc., we're going to talk about, you can look at the stock market and see how all those stocks are doing, but ultimately you are your number one stock. You are your most valuable asset. Your consciousness and your ability to direct your attention where you want, when you want, and create the life that you want. We're going to talk about how to go about making that investment moment to moment to moment, which leads us to our fifth big idea, which is the big three assets and the vault. The big three assets are what? Energy, family, service. If you were an investment advisor, to use another metaphor, right? Looking at the most wonderfully diverse portfolio that's going to deliver the best returns, what are they for true wealth? Energy, family, service. We're going to walk through that. Look at the forms of wealth that are created in each of those domains. Then we're going to look at the vault. I'm going to keep that one a secret for now. But you have a vault. And if I could open this vault and look inside its contents, I'll be able to tell you how you're doing in relationship to you becoming a psychological billionaire and abundant in every sense of the word. Our sixth big idea is how to go about creating financial abundance, which is wealth via profound service. I got that from Steve Chandler. How to create wealth via profound service. We're going to talk about three mindsets, the passion mindset, the craftsman mindset, and the servant mindset. Those three circles right, that form the hedgehog concept we've talked about before, we're going to apply that to creating wealth and abundance in a material sense in your life. And then we have our seventh big idea, which is the five steps to getting what you want in life. Ray Dalio is one of the wealthiest people in the world, one of the hundred wealthiest people in the world, one of the most influential, and he runs one of the most impactful, powerful companies in the world. He has a five-step process to getting what you want in your life. We're going to walk through that, and you're going to see just how important making mistakes is to that process. you got to have an audacious goal. Then what do you do? Then you fail. Then you learn. Then you optimize. Then you continue setting more and more audacious goals. We're going to walk through that as it relates to your goal to create abundance in your life. It's kind of like a whoop process, only rather than by a wonderful intellectual psychologist, a truly uh, abundant, wealthy practitioner, but very similar ideas of having your vision, rubbing it up against reality, and then taking the action you need to take. Our eighth big idea is attention economics. We have spiritual economics. Then we're going to talk about attention economics, specifically Herbert Simon. 1971, Herbert Simon told us that information was creating, a, a wealth of information was creating a poverty of attention. We're going to talk about why that matters today more than ever before if you want to execute and actualize your potential. 
We're also going to talk about where you want to invest your attention in time, affluence, and autonomy. Shift from buying stuff to buying time affluence and buying autonomy. We'll unpack that. And then our ninth big idea is to circulate versus spend. We're going to talk about the importance of seeing that money is kind of like oxygen. It comes in and it goes out. You want to circulate deliberately and consciously and see the interconnectedness between the money that's coming into your life, thanking all the people who are supporting you, and then the money that's going out and thanking all the people who are contributing to your well-being. We'll talk about how to go about doing that. We'll also talk about the fact that money does, in fact, grow on trees. That'll be fun. The tenth big idea, science says your brain on money. We're going to look at the four things, two, three, four things, that science says we want to think about in terms of our money, and our lives and our psychological well-being. And then bonus, 11th big idea, Actualize You, Inc. How do we go about doing that? Well, we want to think about capitalizing mistakes. We want to dissolve the dichotomy, the apparent dichotomy between the spiritual and the material. And we want to celebrate and enjoy and create the ultimate dividends in life, which again, going back to the first idea, is happiness euthymia, a sense of tranquility, reducing comparison, reducing competitiveness, and going out and being you. You at your highest, most expressed self. That's how we create abundance in our lives. Let's dive in.